And we are moving away from uh, head and now we have reached uh, small pelvis. And uh, the last, probably the last session would be about the uh, prostate cancer. Uh, with name of, it, of my topic, stereotactic grader therapy for localized prostate cancer, but honestly say I would like to choose to modify it, it a little bit and to say way towards stereotactic radiotherapy. Uh, prostate cancer is probably a little bit different disease than we talked on yesterday and today because it's, it's number one male cancer all over the Europe and in all Western world. And that means huge numbers of patients, not tens, not hundreds, but thousands of patients in even small countries like Lithuania or Latvia or Estonia. So it has, this disease has very great social economic impact on society. Uh, we see quite different incidence rates uh, even through Europe. It probably represents difference in lifestyle, risk factors, maybe different aging population, but also it represents the spread of PSI testing. Uh, which allows for us to pick early prostate cancer and uh, leads sometimes and not sometimes very often to overdiagnosis of prostate cancer. And with PSI testing, we are detecting indolent low risk prostate cancer and looking, looking at the mortality rate, which are quite, quite consistent among countries despite I, uh, different in incidents, uh, we can think what probably not all uh, prostate cancers must, must be treated. So, classification and division of into risk groups usually is based uh, on quite simple clinical and biochemical uh, parameters, PSA, Gleason score, what we receive from biopsy and clinic, clinical stage. And usually we are dividing into three. Of, of course, there are uh, more, more precise uh, definitions, but usually low, intermediate, and high risk prostate cancer. With prostate cancer, also we have many different treatment modalities. And starting from the open surgery, laparoscopic and even robotic surgery, non-radiological modalities like RIO, HIFU, uh, starting with radiotherapy, we have low-dose rate brachytherapy seeds, high-dose rate brachytherapy, uh, external beam with all the fancy MRT and image guidance possibilities, and of course tools for hypofractionation treatment as Tomo or, of course, cy cyber, cyber knife as a leader in stereotactic radiotherapy. And uh, last but not the least, proton, proton therapy, which also became not so exotic and expensive options. Uh, looking through all risk groups, of course, we have competition between treatment modalities and in absence, practically, and absence of good prospective randomized trials comparing surgery versus radiotherapy or uh, something similar, we can uh, gain information from uh, meta-analysis. And in all risk groups, radiotherapy, cancer, prostate cancer risk groups, prostate radiotherapy plays quite a significant role producing either alone brachytherapy or combined external plus brachytherapy in high-risk groups provide very good uh, disease control results that comparing with, which is comparable to surgical series. Uh, let's make a little flashback um, near a uh, hundred years ago. It's a copy of radiotherapy record from my city, from 1930, it's treatment of all gentlemen with prostate pathology. Uh, it was very prominent Lithuanian, one of the most prominent Lithuanian poets. 
Uh, and he was treated with single dose radiotherapy procedure. Uh, the dose is stated six Holznecht units, probably nobody in this room already knows what it means. But what was the beginning of radiotherapy? And it was single fraction, fraction treatment. Uh, later, before the Second World War, mainly by French schools of radiotherapy, it was recognized what treatment may be better tolerated and more effective if delivered in small doses over protracted treatment courses. So we, the idea of fractionation treatment became the standard for, let's say, for decades and remains the standard even today. Uh, in case of prostate radiotherapy, this means, assuming that prostate adenocarcinoma is quite radioresistant tumor, it means we need large tumor doses. And now for standard fractionation radiotherapy, we talk about doses more than uh, 80 gray. And in Conventional two-gray fractionations, it means very long treatment courses, about two months, and it's cumbersome for the patients and causes many logistical problems, and of course, it's, it's quite expensive, expensive option. But still today, it's standard radio radiotherapy procedure. We have quite a good evidence on local control comparing with other treatment modalities, and especially we have already good long term two data about toxicity of radiotherapy, also compared with other treatment options, mainly with, with surgery and with active surveillance positions. We can look at this recently published data. It's data of more than 1,060 patients, which were followed with questionnaires concerning which con touch various aspects of sexual and bovel and functional sites. And we now have a quite good understanding what we can say for the patient about treatment sequence. And that is probably treatment sequence in prostate cancer is probably the most critical critical problem for the patient. And now we can say, yes, if you go with surgery, you probably have, uh, will have problems with urinary leakage or your sexual life will be not so good uh, as before surgery. If you go with radiotherapy, okay, no, no leakage, but probably you have a little bit risk for bowel function disorder, including uh, blood in the stall. But overall, so overall quality of life is quite um, comparable with various treatment options. So today we still have classical fractionation as a mainstream option in the radiotherapy treatment of prostate cancer. Uh, but already at the beginning of the century, we radiotherapy community started accumulate the evidence that uh, yes, prostate cancer is a little bit different from other cancers like head and neck or lung cancer. And data from clinical trials showed that alpha beta value is a characteristic of radiological characteristic of a tumor. And it shows that prostate cancer has a low alpha beta value. So it is more like a normal, normal tissue. And that means that changing in frac fraction size, increase in the fraction size, would produce more pronounced effect on such a type of tumors. And assuming what neighboring uh, organs like a blood and rectum risk organ has probably higher alpha beta value, would allow to spare those organs. And now this was ideas utilized in many clinical trials, and now we have already uh, series, published series of big long-term prospective randomized trials, which utilized various modestly fractionation. Those like this 
trial published recently, and it was comparison of 45 grays in two gray fractions, and the main, it was 60 gray in 20 fractions. It means three gray fra daily dose, and this lead to nearly double reduction in the treatment, treatment time. And yes, the trial showed that this is non-inferiority regimen, uh, and also with acceptable toxicity, and it was post uh, according uh, as well with data and data from other trials probably allow us to say what yes, moderately hypofractionation radiotherapy now could be considered a standard treatment for early and intermediate risk prostate prostate cancer. Moving forward into um, hypofractionation uh, area, we are coming to stereotactic body radiotherapy field, which we are talking already today. Uh, but this today with definition, stereotactic body radiotherapy is probably more historical. We do not need external stereotactic frame li like in early historical settings of uh, last lexel. But now we are talking of high dose radiation delivered in single dose or with small number of fractions, and we are talking about high degree of precision within the body. So in that description and in context of prostate cancer, we have very good treatment modality, prostate high dose rate brachytherapy, uh, which allows for us to produce very conformal treatment plans, very accurate treatment plans, and to perform procedure also very, quite very quickly. Uh, initial experience, experience with high dose rate brachytherapy was for high risk prostate cancer, usually as boost, and it was shown that such a combined treatment uh, allows to safely and efficiently deliver high doses to the prostate, and recalculation to equivalent doses, it's those regimens exceed 100 gray. It's m significantly a higher radiation doses even in IMRT, IMRT settings. So today we have a quite a number of uh, clinical, tri clinical trials. Uh, the problem is with difference in fractionation regimens, in doses, in number and fractions, but all the, all the data show quite a good local control for low, intermediate, and even high risk, risk uh, prostate cancer, and also the toxicity of high dose rate monotherapy in prostate cancer is acceptable. The last series. Uh, especially this from Peter Hoskin from UK, already we are talking about single, single fraction uh, prostate brachytherapy, and it seems that this could be, could be standard high dose rate brachytherapy procedure in the nearest future. So simply we are returning to the earliest data and are try, trying to treat prostate cancer with one single single fraction. As well, results and toxicity data with, with sing, single insertion prostate brachytherapy is quite, quite accessible. Uh, classical SBRT, as we understand it, again, the experience is gaining, but it comes mainly from cyber, ni cyber knife series. Also, there are some reports on gan gantry ba based systems, and already recently published five years outcomes from multi center uh, trials uh, shows us very good local control in low and intermediate risk patients with acceptable, acceptable toxicity. Uh, so now we probably can, uh, can postulate what the hypofractionation radiotherapy as a natural obvious evolution of external beam for prostate cancer. 
and it has radiobiological rationale and also is supported by uh, technology dev development, including IMRT, image guidance, uh, intrafractional tracking. Uh, probably hypofractionation radiotherapy is faster treatment. Maybe in some circumstances it's cheaper. And of course, it's a better way for treating, especially from the patient's point of view, because it takes a, a lot lo less time. So it could be considered as acceptable option in treatment for low and intermediate risk patients with quite a acceptable urinary toxicity. But, but, the penetration of these new ideas is still slow. And we will see from the data, it's published re recently, but still the majority of patients, despite the coming evidence of benefits of hypofractionation, still the majority of patients are treated with convention, conventional fractionation. Another, another problem, probably, or maybe not a problem, it's now I have a much more better understanding of prostate cancer biology than maybe 15 or 20 years ago. And recently data shows that for low risk prostate cancer, there is no advantages in early and aggressive treatment. Active surveillance for majority of these patients provides the same, the same mortality rate and also lets to avoid associated treatment complications and probably allows to reduce treatment associated cost. So in the recent 10 years, we see a declining the numbers of use of aggressive treatment, both surgery and radiotherapy in the setting of low and sometimes intermediate risk, risk factors. And trends in treating this disease confirms as thesis we see in low risk group, up to maybe 25 or 30% of the patients could go on active surveillance. So with delay of treatment and treatment only, only in if you have tumor progressions. And the focus for radical treatment, surgery and as well radiotherapy is more uh, focused on high risk and uh, on high risk disease and even now in very high risk disease settings, even with lymph node metastasis and even with uh, oligometastasis, we are thinking about aggressive treatment of primary disease and as well all metastatic, metastatic sites. So that is a little bit changing, changing situation with the treatment of prostate cancer. I hope uh, radiotherapy, high precision radiotherapy and probably hypofractionation radiotherapy would remain valuable option for the treatment of, pa of prostate cancer patients. Of course, we probably today do not know what treatment modality would be the best. We now have a quite a great shows. We yesterday saw again uh, new developments from Acure. There are also advance of MRI Linux. We will first give on pre precedental possibility to imaging the tumor during the treatment. So I think we will have very, very interesting future. So thank you for your attention. Also, I still am on the stage. Many thanks for the organizers for this nice, nice conference.